Hi, welcome back to the Praxis Test Prep course. My name is Tasha. I'm a former high school biology teacher. Today, I'm going to walk you through some practice problems for the Praxis 5025 exam. That's the early childhood education exam, specifically the science portion, and also the fundamental concepts and processes of scientific inquiry. Okay, let's get started. Okay, problem one, which of the following is the structure of a hypothesis in the scientific process? So if you're looking at all of these, the scientific process, be a summary of the research findings, this will should be in the results section of the scientific process. See a detailed analysis of experimental data. That should be in the discussion of that. D, a list of observations should also be in the results of that. A, an if-then statement predicting the outcome, this is what the hypothesis is. So our answer is A, an if-then statement predicting the outcome. Question two, students in a second grade science class are exploring the properties of common materials. Which of the following activities would best help students understand the concept of buoyancy and density as properties that affect whether a piece of wood and a rock of similar size will float or sink in the water? So here we are really trying to identify whether it will float or sink. So that is buoyancy. And the density is how thick that material is or how dense that material is. So A, measuring the temperature of the water to see if it affects whether the object floats or sinks. Yes, that's buoyancy, but temperature does not have to do with how buoyant a something is. B, comparing the weight of the objects and observing which one floats when placed in a tub of water. So this is the weight, which relates to the density. So this is, this does affect buoyancy. So our answer is going to be B, but let's look at the other options. Cutting into an object to determine if one is hollow. That is a little bit with density, but not really with buoyancy. D, placing the tub the wood in a tub of oil and the rock in a tub of water to see if different liquids have a different result. It doesn't really, that's different buoyancies. So that would be different results. So our answer is still B. Okay, question three. During a third grade science lesson, the students are investigating how different factors affect plant growth. Which of the following is the best example of a variable that can be measured and recorded to observe its influence on the rate of plant growth? So the keywords here are the best example and that it can be measured and recorded. So we look at, let's th look back and see what they, what plants need to actually grow. They need sunlight, they need oxygen, they need water. They also need space, certain plants, and certain plants also need soil. There are other plants that do not need soil, but some plants need soil. So the color of the plant pot is really not going to impact that the type of music played near the plant is also, and the same with the name given, those aren't in what the plant needs. So the plant needs the amount of sunlight that the plant receives. So our answer is B. Okay, last question. Fifth grade students are conducting an experiment to understand the concept of force and motion. They are particularly interested in how different surfaces affect the speed of a rolling object. Which of the following is the most appropriate question to guide their investigation? Okay, so the most appropriate question is what we are looking for. So let's kind of clue in on that. And we are looking specifically at different surfaces as well. So just a reminder that force equals um, mass times acceleration. So the first one, do heavier objects roll faster than lighter ones? This is has to do with force because mass would be how heavy it is, but it doesn't have to do with those surfaces. Who can roll an object the furthest distance? not really having to do with force, what the shape of the object is, not really having to do with force either. So how does the texture of a surface impact the speed of a rolling object? So that is both with to do with force and with those different surfaces. So our answer will be D. How does the texture of a surface impact the speed of a rolling object? I hope this was helpful. If you're looking for more ways to study, head over to study.com for more practice problems or to check out our other videos. As a study.com member, you get full access to hundreds of problems like the ones I just walked you through, as well as targeted instruction for some topics you might still be struggling with, along with some test-taking strategies to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we want to hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful. In the comments down below, please let us know if there's any topics you'd like us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying!